everyone, I'm Deborah, one of your module leaders. We've looked at why auditors take a risk-based approach and done our homework on the entity and its environment using the Unit 15 case study. Now we're going to get into the details of understanding controls and performing walkthroughs. The reason we have to do this is so that we can come up with our risk-based audit strategy. There's a lot to get through, so this is going to be a three-part video series. In this first part, we'll cover the theory under ISO 315 revised. In part two, I'll be demonstrating how to understand one of Monty Travel's processes using flowcharting techniques. Finally, part three will focus on performing a walkthrough using an application control from the Monty Travel case study. Make sure you've got your CSG handy so you can refer to it as we go through. Let's get started. ISO 315 Revised devotes a lot of space to an entity's internal control. It can get pretty confusing, but just remember that the requirement is to obtain an understanding of internal control relevant to the audit, which is a matter of the auditor's professional judgment. Here's a quick recap of the different components of internal control under ISO 315 Revised. Management identify the business risks, then decide whether to exploit, tolerate, or transfer the risk, or reduce or avoid the risks by implementing controls at the entity level like communication practices and behaviors that cultivate a culture of honesty and ethical behavior in order to create a strong control environment. This is the foundation of an entity's internal control. If entity level controls don't work, nothing else will either. Management can also reduce or avoid risk more directly by implementing control activities at the process level where transactions are being processed through the entity's information system. ISO 315 revised groups control activities based on their objective, either to prevent or to detect and correct risks. The standard also looks at control activities in terms of their nature. Once implemented, controls are monitored to make sure they're working and the results are fed back into the risk assessment process, which starts the cycle all over again. Under ISO 315 revised, auditors have to obtain an understanding of all of these different components of an entity's internal control. But when we're specifically talking about understanding controls and performing walkthroughs, we're really talking about the transactional level and focusing on three things. One, understanding the process. ISO 315 revised requires us to do this for the business processes which are relevant to financial reporting. Two, Understanding the risks in the process and the relevant control activities management have designed in response. And three, confirming your understanding from one and two by walking through one transaction. Here's what an auditor would expect to see for a simple retail client. For the most part, this is consistent with what we can expect for Monty Travel, with the inventory and cogs process being the main exception. For this video, we'll look at the purchases and cash disbursement processes. Since purchases feeds into accounts payable, in real life, this is often treated together as a single large purchase to pay process. We'll start by understanding how transactions move through the four different phases of the purchase to pay process. You'll need to be across all this before you can start understanding Monty Travel's purchase to pay process. If you need to, just rewind and watch this video again. Otherwise, stay tuned and follow me into part two.